it was a huge culture shock for me. And I was like, mm. there is a whole world out there and America is maybe not the greatest country in the world. This is Silbe. She's from America, but has lived in Sweden and the UK for seven years. We discussed what's wrong with American tourists abroad, why deadlines in Britain are often perceived as flexible, and how long it takes for an American to start understanding British English. I'm Max, let's go. When I moved outside of the US for the first time, when I moved to Sweden back then, it has like different pros and cons, but I was kind of brainwashed as a child, like in, you know, your school, like America's the greatest country, you know, but then when I was exposed to all these, you know, different types of cultures and meeting different types of people, I realized, oh, well, there's a whole world out there. And I really enjoyed my life living in Europe at the time. And I was able to travel so easily. After that ended, I moved back to the States and I just realized I just don't feel like I belong here anymore because I was exposed oh. to the outside world. So I'm like, I need to get out of here. You mentioned that uh, like growing up, you were taught that US is the, the greatest country in the world. Then you moved to, to Sweden, to Europe. What was the biggest revelation? Or what was the biggest shock that, oh, it's not like that. It's, what, it's not what I thought. Well, the, the biggest revelation when I first moved to Sweden is how people were less superficial i'm from the us but like i'm also from i grew up in la so la is you know hollywood everybody cares about the celebrities and what they look like that kind of stuff yeah. that world i mean i gotta say i don't rep represent the whole of america it's just i just know what i know um in the west coast and especially la and san francisco from that kind of flashy kind of atmosphere that i grew up in and then go to Sweden where people are a little bit more relaxed about like the way they look. Nobody has to look perfect. Nobody has to get plastic surgery all the time or, you know, that kind of very laid backness. And then people were actually, I guess, being in the in industry that I was in, everyone was talking about the like, latest new technology, the most expensive holiday and like the Michelin star restaurant. And then when I went to Stockholm, people were just completely happy going mushroom picking. That kind of, you know, rustic environment. And that was the first time I realized being in the nature is actually kind of better than, you know, purchasing that, you know, hottest new designer bag. You know what I mean? People really valued family quality time. Whereas in the US, when I was working in marketing, it's like, I got to admit in my early to mid twenties, I was a bad friend because I was never there for them because work got in the way. I would be, I promised them that I was going to be at their birthday party. However, I wasn't able to make it because just the last minute work came along. And that was like the biggest thing that I had. To, that's the most important thing in my life. I had to get it done. But when I moved to Sweden, I realized that people were very punctual. And they really cared about making, keeping their promises when they tell them that they're going to be there for their friends. Everyone around them respected that, like their work people, work colleagues respected that. How do you think uh, Europeans see Americans? Uh, let's say specifically British, how do they see Americans? Do they have any prejudices when they, they, they find out you're from the US? What's the reputation you think of, of Americans? We're loud. <laughs> I kind of notice how patriotic Americans are compared to maybe the rest of the world was when I was watching the Olympics. It's yeah. just Americans are always the loudest, even when you're like, when it's being broadcasted and I watch it and then everyone's like, yes, I, 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 I don't hear other countries being that loud, you know? So that's when I was, oh, sorry, we're really loud, <laughs> you know, <laughs> poorly dressed. We're a bit obnoxious, kind of demanding, I guess, because um, people, American people are used to like customer service, really good customer service. That's one thing also shocked me when I moved to Sweden as well. There's no sense of customer service because everyone's just individual and you just rely on yourself. That's very independent culture. Whereas in America, you just want to be cared for because usually you pay the tip at the end. So that's what they expect yeah. people outside of the country and that they don't they're just getting normal service in that country but they're like oh my god the service here is so horrible like did you see that like he was so rude like 
that kind of mentality that I can see how America they come up as a little bit annoying and obnoxious. Typical American tourists when they come out of the country for the first time, they think um they own the world maybe because of the patriotic belief system that is so instilled in us when you're growing up in school. For me, the most important thing in life, it's not business, it's not even this YouTube channel. It's the happiness of myself, my family and my friends. And my current job allows me to focus on the things that really matters in life for me. This is my full-time project and I know this game. And I show you all of my secrets and strategies on a three-day online workshop, YouTube fast track to views and passive income. You will learn how to overplay the YouTube algorithm, how to gain thousands and thousands of views, even on a small channel. All the ways of making money on YouTube, including generating a passive income on this platform. So I packaged everything in a three days event, which was before paid, but now it's free for everyone. So you don't want to miss it. Book your seat following the link in description. And I'll see you on this three-day event. If you ever thought of starting a YouTube channel, this is your best first step. What about the language? So do you have any difficulties or like, was it weird for you how people use words for you as an American? Yes. Oh my God. Communication was really hard for me, I gotta say. Because we speak the same language, but the accent was so different. So I'm sure it, it's kind of amusing to think that I had better time communicating with Swedish people who spoke English than with British people who spoke English. Because when I first came here, I knew that they were speaking English, but I was not used to it. So I had no idea what they were saying. I felt like it was completely a foreign language. First, like two years, I think I absolutely needed subtitles to watch TV. And also there are so many different accents here, even in the city of London, people have different accents. So I just couldn't figure it out. I was a little bit afraid to speak or to engage in any kind of deep conversation with British people when I first started, because it sounded like a foreign language. But now over time, I'm used to it. I don't have any fears of talking to my clients about what grooming requirements they have, you know, having consultations. I have no problem communicating with them nowadays, but first two years, definitely, it was a huge adjustment. Um, Scottish accent, I still cannot understand it. Sorry. <laughs> but the funny thing is, um, some of my American friends tell me that um, I have kind of adopted some of like British I don't think accents, but like the words that I use, they find that very funny um, when I say like, oh, uh, she like when I describe a dog, oh, he's so cheeky and like Americans will never say that word or like, oh, bless her. Like I thought I would never, you know, use that kind of expression. Americans will say take the trash out, whereas like here, take the bin out, you know, but now I use like the bin <laughs> instead of the trash. So my American yeah. make fun of me for that, that I've turned British. <laughs> what do you think people are friendlier? And maybe, okay, that's the first one. And the second one, what do you think the biggest difference in mentality? If you compare Americans, like let's say I'm generalizing, but typical Americans versus typical British. Americans are very friendly and approachable from the outside. You can just talk to a stranger. You can just start a conversation with anyone and people will generally be friendly to you. Although I think British people are a little bit more American in the sense that they might think that you're really weird, but they could still talk to you. Maybe if you catch the right person. But I remember when I was in Sweden, people were more reserved there. So if you try to start a conversation with random stranger they're like what the hell are you doing they're like i don't know you don't interrupt me don't disturb my peace they will be more shy or again like reserved about um talking to just random people i guess um so in that sense i guess americans can come off as like more friendly outside but that doesn't mean that um, they're going to like, always going to be there for you. For example, like if you're a foreigner coming to the U.S. and that you struck a conversation with some American, they feel like they're completely like 
your new friend and then they might be like we should totally hang out but then when and they, it never happened <laughs> whereas um whereas if you said that to a swede in sweden they will show up they will make up the they will be there for your you know i don't they'll make sure that you actually do hang out at some point i think it's more similar here in the uk i think people will if they set up a date they will try to show up i guess more in that sense um unlike americans but i don't know i don't want to sound like americans are horrible no they're not it's just that we're overly friendly when we don't mean it sometimes being Asian, where you feel more comfortable, in the US or in Britain? I was very lucky that I didn't feel awkward being an Asian person living in the States. I would say I don't feel uncomfortable being an Asian person in this country or at least this city because this city is so international. But I think when I moved to Stockholm, there was a little bit of a culture shock. What, that was like 2012 or something. So that was already like, you know, more than 10 years ago, right? And it was still, I always say Sweden was still more homogenous than, say, London. When they saw me, like a single Asian woman, just walking down the street, I didn't look like a tourist. So they kind of questioned, like, I, I felt a little bit uncomfortable, I would say. I did experience, like, some kids drunken kids on their you know public transport telling me to go back to my country do you miss anything from your life in the u.s there are certain things that i do miss about america is uh when i was opening this business how hard it is to get things done in this country for example mm. you know when you have like a plan to build a store for example you know with your contractors, you know, your construction workers or whatnot, like the companies that you work with, they will have a set timeline and the deadlines and they will try to meet those dates no matter what, because in America, if things go wrong, people <laughs> will sue you or at least threaten to sue you. And it is possible. Um, so people generally do get things done on time because they don't want any repercussions if they don't meet their deadlines. Whereas in this country, the laws are a bit different, so it takes a lot of patience. So there are certain things. I opened this shop in June, and I'm supposed to have a daycare portion of the business in my basement unit. However, my landlord has to fix certain things, which she still hasn't. So it's been almost like more than 10 months because she was supposed to fix this place even before I opened this salon in June. So these things just, I take for legal advice, but there's no way around it. As long as like she's willing to fix it for me, it's just taking a long time because people don't show up, people don't meet the deadlines or they just don't have deadlines. They don't want to give you the deadlines. It's kind of like a complacent sense of getting your work done that exists in this country a little bit is really challenging for me <laughs> and for I think a lot of other people, but people just put up with it. The mentality is keep calm and carry on. In terms of safety, where do you feel more safe? Like because LA and San Francisco area like has this reputation of, you know, having a lot of crime. But London as well, like stabbing and stuff, it also exists there. Like, what, what do you think about this one? One good thing about this country or any other European country that I know of is that you're not allowed to have guns. Like civilians are not allowed to have guns. So I really appreciate that. That's one thing I really dislike about America is that we still have this gun violence issue. When I moved here, I feel like it's slightly, I guess, safer, so to speak, than that San Francisco because, unfortunately, when I went back there, I would see kind of sad situations where it was almost like a third world country in a way that I would see used up needles or like human feces everywhere because you know the government wasn't really taking care of people who are out on the street who are mentally ill who is not able to 
look after themselves and the number of these people increase. I don't know, as the city gets richer and richer, they're pushing out like normal people and people lose their homes and they're on the street. So it was a really kind of sad and I guess that was a bit, I guess if I think about it, maybe unsafe because, you know, used up needles on the street and you're walking your dog and you don't want your dog to step on it. So I guess in that sense, it was unsafe. Uh, when I moved here, I didn't see any of that. So I was like, oh, it's better than San Francisco. But then I also hear about like people stabbing kids, usually younger people doing that. Yeah, it would be unsafe. I don't really feel that threatened for my life, to be honest with you. Around my shop, um, this neighborhood, it's central London. I'm located on 112 Cleveland Street um, in Fitzrovia. Um, you can just come by our shop. Um, we're very interested in um, making this business as sustainable and eco-friendly as possible. So, you know, sometimes there's just so many people and around the holiday season, because I know that there's like theft going on, like Amazon parcels getting stolen very easily. It happens here. But other than that, I think I feel pretty okay. I was overworking in America. The working culture was just so horrible. From, I mean, compared to Asia, maybe it's not as bad from what I hear. But after living in Sweden and, and seeing how great of like life and work balance there was, and then seeing mm. how I'm like, laying away for these like multi-billion dollar companies, just making that more money. And I was working 18 hours a day and just not my life is not being compensated enough for the amount of work that I was putting into. I was working 18 hours a day and it was not a healthy environment for me. I fell into depression. I just kind of had a nervous breakdown towards the end of my corporate career in marketing in America. I just could not stay in the U.S. any longer either because I just felt like all of my peers, they were going through the same thing, but they were just stuck because that's what they know. But then my dog um, just... I, I had a Maltese. She actually recently passed away, like in last um, November. She was nearly 17 years and she traveled the world with me. She's the biggest love of my life. But um, I used to brush her hair all the time and she was always in good shape. And people were complimenting on the way she looked. So I thought maybe I can give it a try dog grooming. And I found school in London with dog grooming. So I decided to enroll and I start this journey. Here I am. I have my own salon um, as of last June and uh, the client base is growing and I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you are so sweet. Thanks for watching the next video. Yeah, right here. This one. Thank you again and see you there.